welcome back to episode 13 of A, a Very Venture Podcast. Uh, today we are talking about season 4.2, mm -hmm. episode 2, called Pump and Circuitry. Yep, um, and if you guys have not seen uh, said episode, or uh, if you haven't seen any, I guess, of season 4, you pro probably shouldn't be watching, because we will just be spoiling like crazy. Yeah. It's kind of our favorite. So we're just going to jump right into it, because there's so much to talk about. Yeah. It was another episode <laughs> where we had to watch it twice, we had mm -hmm. to do some research, we had to call up our friend Mark, Mark from Venture Bros blog on the red Tell phone. Us. To help us figure things out. We're kind of hoping, um, with all the research we had to do this week and last week, that next week it's about testicular torsion or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something simple. Something straightforward. Yeah. So, uh, without further ado, mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to talk about the episode. Uh, first of all, Hank and Dean have graduated from their learning bed. <laughs> Peter plays its version of Pomp and Circumstance as the Diploma Prince, which the, was really The fun. one diploma. Yeah, one diploma. Only Dean's. Yeah. I mean, no surprise. And Hank's all, you know, now we get to ditch the nerd pads and get graduate to bunk beds, you know? And I was like, aw. <laughs> he's been waiting this whole time for bunk beds. <laughs> he's, like, almost college age. But then he should go because you get a dorm situation. Yeah, that's true. And score a bunk bed. He should stop resisting college so much. <laughs> so, also, uh, we noticed that Hank sleeps in Brock's jacket. And we thought that was pretty much the cutest thing ever. Yeah. And it's really adorable. Yeah, and he saw his hair at the beginning, and, mm -hmm. you know. He had, like, I'm going to say 15 solid seconds of actually being kind of cute. When he wears the black turtleneck. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the shaggy hair. Yep. Yeah, that's your type. Yep. So the episode sort of kicks off uh, talking about, or it shows us the Council of Thirteen and how uh, Councilmen Three and Eight are still together, and so the Council's talking about replacing them with, uh, or replacing Councilman uh, Eight, is it? Or is it three? three? I think it's three. Uh, with a new councilman, which is exciting because, like, who could it be? We had some oh. guesses that, like, Dr. Z was one of the, um... Oh, yeah. One of the councilmen. I looked at a picture of him from, um, Dr. Z, who's, uh, the, one of the Johnny Quest, uh, villains. And, uh, or, I'm sorry, Action Johnny villains, Dr. Z. <laughs> uh, from that, what was it, Boy Day Camp Adventure episode? Mm, yeah. Um, and, but when I, you compare the pictures, very similar. Also, uh, Phantom Limb is hanging out in Guild Prison. <laughs> he is still batshit crazy. Yeah. Uh, he is... Although strangely proactive and competent, even though he's batshit crazy. Even though he's crazy, mm -hmm. yeah. So, if you, you probably noticed in uh, the prison scene that Phantom Limb was officially and completely limbless. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have his prosthetics, which he got after he lost an arm and a leg during the showdown at Cremation Creek episode at the finale of season two. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that the guild also took away um, his. Yeah, so the guild also took away those prosthetics. So he's like completely. He has nothing. Nothing. No limbs. He has like his arm and his leg yeah. are like. Two of them are tied. tied cloth. And then the other two are torn. Torn, yeah. Like he's Antis stubby. <laughs> And anticipating reattachment. Well, apparently in the sequence where you see um, those inanimate objects taking out the armed guard, you find out that um, it's actually his limbs that I'm assuming were filed away that are coming out and like they planned this whole, you yeah. know, situation. And um, they release him. It's kind of like Doc Ock, you know, from Spider Man. Like if they reattach, you know, took away his. Um, arms and they bust out and bust him out of prison and nerd, nerd, nerd. So also, the guild has files on all the villains. Mm -hmm. We see them when the guild member goes into the drawer and also when Phantom Limb goes into the drawer. Um, files on people such as Dr. Girlfriend, which mm -hmm. is crossed out, and Dr. and Mrs. the Monarch is written there. And on the Monarch, mm -hmm. uh, King Gorilla, there's Manta Claus, Half Jackal, Scorpio, Flying Squid. And a ton of others. Who's Flying Squid? We don't really know. <laughs> but um, it's so, I mean, it's like a whole wall of mm -hmm. them. But we, we got to read some of them. We'll post a screenshot of yeah. uh, some of the ones that were on there. We saw, actually, when Phantom Limb busts out of the joint that... Uh, he goes into his own personal folder and you see that there's like all these tabs on it and one of them was relationships and he pulls out this picture and it's a black and white photo and one of them is him sitting in a wheelchair which is when he has like his shrunkety arms and legs mm -hmm. from um when i get uh when before his ac uh before his um 
freak accident sort of With science. the muscle growth accelerator. Mu yeah, exactly, that yeah. Uh, Billy used on him, and that went horribly awry, which is how he got, you know, his magic phantom -y phantom limbs. So, <laughs> deep breath. Okay. But what's interesting is the other people that are in the picture. Um, so you, you got Phantom Limb, and then Dr. Venture, and then Dr. Impossible, and then someone that I'm pretty sure looks like the alchemist. Like, I might be completely... With an afro. <laughs> yeah, with an afro. I might be completely dead wrong on that, but... Well, I think a lot of the characters have similar facial mm -hmm. characteristics. Like, it could... Honestly, if... If it was possible that any of them had that hair, it could have been the monarch, it could have been Dr. Venture, he it could have been the alchemist. I mean, they have the same face. Yeah. So, like, I, while I don't think it was them, mm. it, I mean, it was just, like, that face as a younger person. I'm pretty sure it was the alchemist. So, if you saw, um, th there's one other person in the picture, um, and they're wearing, like, a big B on their chest, and it it's looks... Like a varsity sweater. Yeah, it, Except, yeah. And I think it's a For little adventure. bit Jonas-y looking, but it's mm -hmm. obviously not Jonas because he's next to him. And he's smaller. And he's smaller. But I don't... No one's coming forward with, like, exactly who it is. Like, so it's not, like, super obvious. I think it's not explained yet, but you were thinking... Well, somebody said yeah. on a board mm -hmm. that it could be hatred. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes sense. They're about yeah. the same size, and I, I don't know... I don't know if hatred went to school with them. Do we yeah. know if he went to college with them? I don't think his history has been explained that I don't much. Think so. But the picture is presumably of the boys brigade. So these all these people have a part to play and I'm sure we'll we'll find out in the next few episodes yeah. what it was. So we get to see this super cute list of the boys' dream jobs, um, which, by the way, love that all of them are written in, like, individual handwriting. Like, you get to see the Dean's, Dean's the tight little cursive, and then <laughs> Hank's, like, scribbled, and, scribbled, and then, um, and then Dr. Richards is a lot more like Hank's, but, oh my gosh, anyway, okay. Uh, <laughs> so they talk to Billy, who's standing in as their guidance counselor, about what they want to do with their, uh, in, uh, what careers they want to pursue. And Hank's dream jobs consist of drifter, which is like one of my favorite words ever, so plus five. Um, and he makes a reference. He says, you get to walk around all day reading sexy letters, like in the guy in Red Shoe Diaries. Which is like a Showtime reference from like the 90s. Yeah, so I'm sure Hank was watching <laughs> lots of that show. But when anyway. is Hank watching Showtime shows from the 90s? Also, I feel like Doc Venture would kick him out so he could he watch the it. show. Yeah. yeah. Also, he's very quick to clarify between the Golden Age Batman and post-crisis Batman. That's pretty much what I know about Batman. <laughs> Two different Batmans. He also says that he... But I love it. Um, he wants to run a... Um, was it for apes? Uh, and Eden, Eden for apes. And, and Billy was like, no, you have to have like a bachelor's degree and three to four years in vet school. But what I love about Billy is that instead of going like, that's stupid, you're lame, or like get a grip, he is, he's just, he's like working within Hank's own world. Like, he's like, no, actually Bruce Banner is a doctor and, you know, so-and-so has a mailbox. Like, he is so plugged into the yeah. fantasticness that he's like, logic, logic. Etc. This, yeah, that's how logic sounds. Logic, logic, etc. Um, also, on there is a uh, secutories, mm -hmm. uh, which is a type of gladiator, and they got to beat up the Rishari, <laughs> which Dean loves and Hank calls gay lords. <laughs> Oh, okay, so did you see that on Dean's list, also everything started with boy. It was like boy detective and boy reporter, which is so cute. Yeah, he also had um, marine biologist. I know. And husband. Favorite. <laughs> Dean wants to be a husband when he grows up. I mean, duh. But so cute. To Triana. He wants to be like a, uh, you know. A role model? Stay at home dad. You know. Vacuuming, all fat and Balding deformed. And he also had the Rishi Ari on his list, but he very subtly crossed that out when he got made fun of. <laughs> also, Dr. Venture comes up and he's like, to Dean only, he goes, looks like you forgot super scientist, boy, and writes it on his paper. And Dean's like, N no, I didn't. Like, I don't want to be a super scientist. Sorry, Dad. Which is kind of great, though, that... I Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy that he kind of, like, says no. It's a little independent of him. Even though he's really whiny pants about it. <laughs> but, meanwhile, Hank doesn't even want to go to college. Yeah. And he's kind he, of throwing a fit. He's also being kind of a sass pants about it. 
And then Dr. Venture is like, well, sure, Hank's a bit of a late bloomer, but did you catch Jean's little mustache? It's really starting to come in. Yes, because awesome. that means that you're an adult and you're ready to be ejected into the real world. Obviously. Facial hair. Yeah. Duh. Talk to my grandmother. So then you say you see Hank throwing off and, like, packing. <laughs> did you notice that, that the, uh... Arrows that he's putting in his bag, her little suction cups on them, and, fake. He, and he sticks his little, um, he puts his little Batman mask in there. Love Hank. Also, aviators. Which I can't believe I just said that. Oh yeah, his aviators. I know, you liked no. Hank this episode. Because it was a whole plot to make me like him, and it worked, damn it. So, also, Underbite is homeless. He's hanging out on the side of the road in New York. And... Super villains aren't doing so well. No, they're not. Wow. Well, he was banished from Underland for gay marriage. Mm -hmm. To Dean. Because they got married. Slash Dawn. Venture. Slash Dawn. <laughs> Their missing sister. Dawn. And I'm kind of surprised that we saw him again because Doc and Jackson, like, in the commentary, talked about how they, like, never want to pray for him again or <laughs> they're, like, done with his thread. Ha -ha. They're bored with him. So I'm glad that they, you know, revisited him. Well, it was nice to, I mean, because he was always, like, the Baron and all, you know, yeah. underworld. And he went to college with But him. now he's, like, homeless on the side of the road with a little beanie on. The economy hits everyone. Also, next to him is uh, Phantom Limb. Oh, yeah. Sitting on the side of the road pretending to be homeless. And then one of the Imp Dr. Impossible's, like, guards or yeah. security, whatever, come out to tell him to move, and he shocks him and seals his outfit. And then he busts in to visit Dr. Impossible, who's, like, in quite a state. And, uh, okay, there's, like, this really funny moment where it scans over, and um, <laughs> and Dr. He, and he says something like, oh, yeah, it looks like you've been quite busy. Uh, Fanlon says that to Doctor Impossible. And there are like these jars of yellow liquid. So when we were talking to Doc <laughs> at um, DragonCon, again, I told you we would do this like, yeah, a million times. It's going to happen. So. Um, he told us that when he's in the Astro Base, a lot of times. <laughs> when he's like painting, painting, like for several hours, he gets really into it. He doesn't want to stop. He'll just go, he'll use the bathroom in a bunch of jars. He pees in mason jars. He pees in jars around the Astro Base and leaves them. And then... And then Jackson walks in and is like, you animal. But not even, like... He said not even with, like, humor. It's, like, yeah. completely serious. Like, like you, you are animal. an animal. So, uh, Dr. Phineas Phage comes in at this point, mm -hmm. And <laughs> he is arching Dr. Impossible. Yeah. And he has a group of proteins. Uh -huh. They are... There are lady hench people involved. So he clearly is an equal opportunity employer. It's the first time we've seen lady hench people in the series. Yeah, even if they're teenagers, we'll take it. Yeah, it was exciting. So uh, I think that you found that Phineas is, uh, Phineas Phage, that's right? Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage is a play off of... No, Phineas Phage is the character's character. name. Oh, and, and then Phineas the Gage, real person is Phineas Gage. Who, uh, is that, I'm sure you've heard, if you remember from, like, your psychology class or whatever, that it's the guy who had the railroad spike that went through his head back when things were still in black and white, and, um... <laughs> I think it was Sepiotone. Oh, time. it was Sepiotone, okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, it changed his personality. So I don't really know how he that... Lived. He yeah, lived, yeah. He lived, but it, like, changed, changed So I'm not quite sure how it's connected to the, like... The villain. And the um, cellular humor. Yeah, because it was like the um, the nuclea, mm -hmm. nucleotides? What was it? The nucleotides. Nucleotides. Which is his actual villain name. The nucleotides. Yeah, and then he said something like it had transverse or something. And yeah. We're going to have to brush up on our anatomy for the next time that Phineas shows up. Yeah, that was maybe a little over. Maybe a little. Just a little over.